This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. That's not all, folks. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Way for You Comics, on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. We recently attended a Saturday morning cartoons event at a local theater, and it reminded me that kids today do not get enough exposure to the classics of animation. When you say Looney Tunes to a kid, they know Bugs and Daffy and maybe Porky, but after that, their knowledge base is woefully shallow. So, as a public service, we're going to give a lesson in the lesser-known Warner Brothers cartoon characters. We're going to concentrate on the classics, cartoon shorts up to 1964, rather than later years. Bugs Bunny, voiced by Mel Blanc in 160 cartoon shorts from 1938 to 1964, has had a number of opponents over year, over the years, Elmer Fudd, Yosemite Sam, but there are several other recurring players. Cecil Turtle was brought in to remake the classic Tortoise and the Hare fable three times from 1941 to 1947, beating Bugs each time, voiced by Mel Blanc. Beaky Buzzard was based on ventriloquist Edgar Bergen's character Mortimer Snurd. And had four appearances from 1942 to 1950, voiced by Kent Rogers, Stan Freeberg, and Eddie Bartell. Now, a side note on that. Edgar Bergen had a wildly successful radio series <laughs> with his ventriloquism act for almost 20 years. Think about that. Radio ventriloquism. Mm, I could do that. Yeah, exactly. Not hard. <laughs> Rocky and Muggsy were a pair of mobsters who were asked Bugs seven times from 1946 to 1963. That'll teach us to get ideas. But boss, you know I don't get me ideas. Well, see that you don't. Both voiced by Mel Blanc. Marvin the Martian was constantly trying to blow up the Earth. It obstructed his view of Venus. I think man is the most interesting insect on Earth, don't you? In five shorts from 1948 to 1963, voiced by Mel Blanc. Yeah. What's up, Shock? Your hands up! That's what? <laughs> Black Jacques Chalac was a French-Canadian foe in two shorts in 1959 and 1962. There's the creepy characters inhabiting a series of Bugs Bunny shorts from 1946 to 63. Witch Hazel. Oh. <laughs> the green-skinned witch who always kept losing her hairpins, who was voiced by B. Benaderet and then June Foray. Gossamer, the giant ball of red hair with eyes. My, I'll bet you monsters lead interesting lives. I said to my girlfriend just the other day, gee, I'll bet monsters are interesting, I said. Three appearances, voiced by Mel Blanc. And Hugo, the abominable snowman, two appearances, also voiced by Mel Blanc. And there's, then there's the Tasmanian Devil. Who slobbered his way through five cartoons, only five, yeah. from 1954 to 1964, and was also voiced by Mel Blanc. He did a lot more of the modern cartoons. Yeah. And he was actually paired up with, Bu with, with Daffy later, <laughs> for some reason. In some rare cases, Bugs would find himself protecting another character, such as Playboy Penguin, a small bird who just wants to get home, in shorts from 1949 and 1950. Daffy Duck, who had 130 cartoon shorts, voiced by Mel Blanc, would often share the screen with some of Bugs' foes, as well as Bugs himself. In the early days, he was often paired with Porky Pig in an unlikely comic duo, and in later years, there was another unlikely pairing with Speedy Gonzales, because the age-old saga of duck versus mouse. Speedy Gonzales, in 46 cartoons going back to 1953 and voiced by Mel Blanc, has essentially disappeared from popular culture due to the insensitive portrayal of Mexicans. Speaking of disappearances, we have to mention Pepe Le Pew. Yoo-hoo, rabbit! 
Sentez-vous, sentez-vous, wherever you are. Ah. Flirt. 18 cartoons from 1945 to 62, voiced by blank. The amorous skunk who would often get confused when white paint got on a female cat. In the Me Too era, it's unlikely you will see him again anytime soon. Yes. Of course, you probably recognize Sylvester J. Pussycat Sr., who appeared in 103 cartoons going back to 1945, with earlier versions as far back as 1939, voiced by Blanc. But how about some of his supporting characters? Of course, there's his long-running partner, Tweety Bird, 47 cartoons from 1941 to 64. But let's not forget Hippity Hopper, 14 appearances from 1948 to 64, a kangaroo that wore stereotypical boxing gloves, generally mistaken to be a huge mouse. Gosh, Father, you sure know your stuff, I guess. Sylvester Jr. had 13 appearances, 1950 to 64, voiced by Blank, who would often be embarrassed by his father. Spike the Bulldog and Chester the Terrier. Hey, Spike, hey, you want to play ball? Huh? You want to play ball? Huh, Spike? You want to? Huh? Huh? Huh, Spike? You want to? Huh? Voiced by Blank and Stan Freeberg, respectively, who appeared twice from 1952 to 54, who were defeated by pure chance each time. And then Sylvester also dealt with Speedy several times, in what is probably a better pairing than Daffy. Cat and Mouse. Cat and Mouse. Not Daffy and Mouse. <laughs> yeah. There was also a period where Sylvester played Elmer Fudd's pet cat and did not speak, similar to how Goofy speaks, but Pluto does not. There are several characters who got their own series of shorts, but are rarely remembered among the big players. Have you got a Labrador? In and in out. Know where you can get a Labrador? In and in out. Then shut up. Charlie Dog had six shorts from 1941 to 1950, voiced by Blank. The main motivation of this conniving Brooklynese mutt was to get an owner to take care of him. <coughs> Claude Cat, in nine shorts from 43 to 59, voiced by Blank, was a neurotic kitty who generally defeated himself each time. Hector the Bulldog was used to harass various characters as well as protect Tweety in 37 shorts from 1942 to 1966. Mark Antony was another bulldog who would harass Claude Cat as well as protect a tiny kitten named Pussyfoot in eight shorts from 1951 to 58. I'm a rootin' tootin', lasso loopin', popgun shootin' chicken hawk. Ah, there's my victim now. Henry Hawk, a tiny bird with a lot of bravado, was often paired as a foil to Foghorn Leghorn in 12 shorts from 1941, I'm sorry, 1942 to 1961, played by Kent Rogers and Mel Blank. Mac and Tosh, the Goofy Gophers, who were in nine shorts from 47 to 65. Simply magnificent. Just loads of closet and oodles of storage space. I think you've made a simply wonderful selection. Well, thank you. I was a little concerned about your approval. Oh, you needn't have worried. I trust your taste implicitly. Thank you. You're so kind. Voiced by Blank and Freeberg, had British accents and were polite to the point of delaying everything they did. Oh, you first, my dear. Oh, no, no, no. It must be you who goes first. Granny was rarely seen without Sylvester, Tweety, or Daffy, voiced by B. Bene... I can never say her Bene name. Benaderet. Benaderet and June Foray. She made 24 appearances from 1950 to 1965. Michigan J. Frog only made one classic Looney Tunes appearance in 1955's One Froggy Evening. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my raccoon gal. But would go on to play the mascot of the early WB network, which is, of course, now part of the CW. Ralph Wolf and Sam Sheepdog. <laughs> It's too close to quitting time, Ralph. Let's pick it up there in the morning. Okay, Sam. Good night. 
Good night, Ralph. Both voiced by Blank and the former looking like Wiley e. Coyote with a red nose, literally clocked in seven times from 1953 to 63, each time treating the abduction protection of a herd of sheep as a nine to five job. Now, I'm sure we're missing many more, and perhaps we'll return to this curriculum at a later time. And please, if you think of any you'd like to share, post them on our Facebook page. Yeah. Because we'd like to know who you like in the Looney Tunes universe. Mm -hmm. And then you can also check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics, on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching.